Hello and welcome back to this next video on a um, hypothesis testing on two population means. Uh, so once again, uh, this is going to be another two-tailed test. Uh, I didn't put a lot of effort into this one. I didn't give it any context. But again, I want to do an exercise uh, where we're going to be testing for a difference between two population means other than zero. Uh, the zero is tends to be the most common, but we want to get some practice uh, in scenarios where the hypothesized difference is something other than zero. So here we've got uh, these results from two independent random samples uh, and we want to test to see that the difference between the two means is uh, 10 pounds. So I'm looking at part A, formulate a hypothesis test to determine that the difference between these two means is 10 pounds. Uh, use alpha 0.03. So if I come up here I'll formulate our test so let's uh, do mu1 minus mu2, and I'll call this one 1 and 2, just just so I've got, <laughs> I've got Justina with me still. She just made a noise and it spoke me. She's got her chew tie on there, she'll be okay for a little while. Mu1 minus mu2, uh, and that difference, I want to test that the mean difference is 10 pounds. So this is 10, this is not 10. Okay, so that's the only difference at this stage. Uh, we have the, the hypothesized difference of 10 rather than a hypothesized difference of 0. So that hasn't changed really much in anything that we've done. We're going to use alpha of 0.03. Again, we always use alpha 0.05, so let's mix it up a little bit here. Uh, so that's all done. We've got our null and alternative. Let's get into our test statistic now. So here we'll go, uh, come down here. This is all the same. The formula is the same as always. And this is sigma 1 squared over n1, sigma 2 squared over n2. And so here I've got my sample means, uh, 128 minus 115. My hypothesized difference is 10 divided by, here's my standard deviations. Here it tells us sigma is known, so these must be my population standard deviations. So this is 4.8 squared over my sample sizes. They both say 40. This is 5.7 squared over 40. Okay, let's come down here. I'm going to do again, I calculate the denominators first just because I find it's easier to do. 4.8 squared divided by 40 plus 5.7 squared divided by 40 square root. So 1.18 will be my denominator. 1.18. Gee, it gets so messy anytime I write close to the bottom of my screen here. 1.18. There's a little better. And the numerator, this is going to be 128 minus 115 minus 10. It's 3. Okay, now 3, where'd my mouse go? 3 divided by 118, 2.54. So there's my z value is 254. Use the p-value approach, so all of this is going to be the same. We'll go to our z tables and we want to look for 2.54. So we can come to our positive side, here's 2.5 and 4. And that gives us the area to the left is 0 0.9945. Now of course you're thinking, well this is a two-tailed test so we have to double that probability. Eh, wrong. We don't want to double that probability, that'll give us a probability close to two. We can't have a probability greater than one. What we always double by two, or what we always double in a two-tailed test is the extreme, either the upper tail extreme or the lower tail extreme. So what we want to double by 2, or to, to what we want to multiply by 2, is this area here. So this is 1 minus 
0.9945. And so what that's going to be, 1 minus 0 0.9945, 0 0.0055, and we times that by 2, and that gives us a p-value of 0 0.011. 0 0.011 is our p-value. Okay, so we took that and we multiplied that by 2. Okay, uh, or, and just again to be consistent, we can always go to the negative side and look up negative 2.54, and that gives us a value of 0 0.005 in this end, and so that p-value is 2 times 0 0.0055, which is going to be the same as we had before, 0 0.011. So coming back to our problem, we have our p-value of 0 0.011. So that allows us now to, at that level of significance, remember we reject if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. Alpha here is 0.03 so we can reject which means that we do have evidence that supports the alternative hypothesis that difference in these two uh, means the difference in the two population means is different from 10 so that evidence does support the alternative hypothesis okay use uh, oh verify the conclusion using the critical value approach so again we're going to reject if our test statistic is greater than or equal to the positive z alpha by 2 or less than or equal to the negative z alpha by 2. Alpha is 0.03, so z alpha divided by 2 is going to be z for 0 0.015. So I want to go to our z tables and look for 0 0.015 and a very common mistake students will make because you tend to scan from the top and you scan through the table and students will come to this one first 0 0.0015 very common mistake that I see again it's often just because you're stressed and short on time but I just want 0 0.015 0 0.015 you'll find it is right down here so that is Z for 0 0.015 is equal to plus or minus 2.17. I say plus or minus again because this is a two-tailed test. So I'm going to reject this is plus 2.17, negative 2.17, right? We'll reject if it's greater than the positive, smaller than the negative. Our test statistic is 2.54. Well, that's way out here somewhere. So if I were to, let me just clean up some space here. Uh, let's say right here. So we'll reject if it's less than negative 217. Reject if it's greater than positive 217. And here's that test statistic 2.54 somewhere way out here. So that is in that rejection space. So that's good. Using the critical value approach, we get the same uh, the same re uh, conclusion. I just wrote off screen there. Let me rewrite. So that's good. Everything works out. We find in both cases, p-value approach, critical value approach, we definitely reject uh, that null hypothesis. We do have evidence to show that the difference in the two means is something other than 10 uh, pounds, I guess, is our unit of measurement in this case. Okay, that's good. So let's uh, let's get into part F now. Again, because we're doing a two-tailed test, we can confirm our results with a confidence interval estimate. So let's do that. Uh, the formula here is going to be the same as that point estimate, plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. All of these things we've already calculated and, and looked up. And that will give us the lower and upper limits uh, for this interval estimate. So let me just get that point estimate, 
128 to minus 115, so that's 13 as our point estimate. So 13 plus or minus, here the critical value, we've already looked that up, that was plus or minus 217 times the square root of 4.8 squared over 40 plus 5.7 squared, that's over here, divided by 40. So that's going to be 13 plus or minus, let me just get that margin of error, 4.8 squared divided by 40 plus 5.7 squared over 40, oops, over 40 square root times that by our critical value 2.3, let's round it 2.39, sorry 2.38 so that leaves us with an upper critical value, or an upper limit of 15.38. So this is 15.38. And the lower, that will be 13 minus 2.38 of 10.62. 10.62. So let's not forget what this is. We performed this, or we calculated this interval estimate uh, at the 97% confidence, right? One minus alpha is 0.97. So I'm 97% confident that the true difference in these population means is between 10.62 and 15.38 pounds. How is that consistent with our conclusions? Well, remember we rejected we said it is not 10 at that level of significance. And here in our interval estimate, I've said, well, it's between 10.62 and 1538. 10 is down here somewhere. 10 is not included in that interval. So at that level of significance, 10 is not within that interval. I'm 97% confident it's between 10.6 and 15.38. 10 is not among those, so that is consistent with our rejection of that null hypothesis. Okay, I hope that all helps. I hope that makes sense. Uh, thank you again for watching. Take care.